went online this morning and I rented us a beautiful house out by the beach. I figured if I made the reservation and packed our bags, it would eliminate most of the reasons to say no. In Leave the World Behind, Julia Roberts is a far cry from the America's sweetheart role. This is your house? When your characters meet, first of all, I could not stand your character. I never thought there would be a Julia Roberts movie where I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I want to just strangle her. Well, my work is done here. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the World Behind is not your typical end-of-the-world apocalypse film. It centers around two families forced together, starring Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, Mahershala Ali, and Mahala Harold. Were you concerned about playing someone who would be so unlikable? Was that on your radar? No, I wasn't concerned, but definitely, you know, I want to find the the balance and the yeah. fairness to her. Right. I didn't want her to be just unlikable mm -hmm. and just yeah. annoying. And so, I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of people to draw from to play a character like this mm -hmm. in yes. the world. Yes. So it was uh, interesting always to be in especially in, in, in our scenes where she's showing who she is, but she's also so guarded yeah. and so just suspicious yes, and defensive, and, yes. and a arm lengths away yeah. from everyone in conversation. What was the experience like, Julia, working with this man? You know, there's just a poetry to the way that he carries himself in life and in art, in my experience. A poetry, that's a, that's a beautiful way to describe you. Very kind of you. How, how would you describe working with Julia? A joy. A joy, Just yeah. a joy. Yeah. A joy. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not a joy with mm. people, and you know that. Right? <laughs> and so um, that makes all the difference in the world, enjoying who you're working with, because so much of our work has to do with, like, playing in vulnerable places. Mm -hmm. The Obamas are the exec producers on this. How much did that play in the fact that you two are sitting here together? I think it plays into how puffed up I feel sitting here right now. <laughs> I think I'd still be sitting here, but uh -huh. that they wanted to collaborate yeah. was a thrill. Yeah. And, and it has elevated the project. Yeah. I, I, first and foremost, I'm always looking at what is the material, yeah. what is the opportunity with the character, mm -hmm. what is the opportunity for growth, and who am I working with? Mahershala is a two-time Academy Award winner who plays the suave finance advisor, G.H. Scott. So you think that the hackers or whatever knocked out our satellites. I no longer think that this is just a couple of teenagers in the Philippines. Well, Variety basically said that uh, the quote I think was Ali steals the show. How does that how does that land? How does that land with you? <laughs> no, it's so weird. I just hope the film resonates with people and I'm just grateful for the opportunity to do this work and grow and be pushed, you know. So I'm, I'm in good Whatever, company. he steals I, the show. <laughs> and you know I'm who else company. steals the show is Ethan. I think they say it a little differently, but you know, I know what you mean. So if you were giving the elevator pitch on this movie, um, how would you describe it? It's a thriller that's about the way we hold ourselves in the world and seeing people put in the most extreme circumstances mm -hmm. of crisis and how they respond to that. Mm -hmm. How about you, Marshall? I'm just in awe of that answer. Um, <laughs> it's, it's early. <laughs> it's it's um, a study in, in trust, um, a study in the fragility of uh, the human condition and our dependence on technology. Yeah, and, that's a big one. And it's really about us, to me, walking away and beginning to have a conversation about how we can appreciate these technologies but also not be so dependent upon them where if something happens, we're not going to be able to continue to, to exist in a similar way. I mean, there's a, there's a scene, obviously, the first scene when your two characters meet for the first time. You're in a tuxedo. You're clearly been out for a beautiful night out, and there's a lot of skepticism. from well, uh, clearly, <laughs> he's trying to make it seem as though perhaps he's just totally to say... Normal, right? <laughs> yes. So in that, you know, before you became wildly famous, mm -hmm. were there moments in your life where you were prejudged? I'm 6'2". I've been 6'2 since I was 14 years yeah. old. Dark-skinned black man, proud to be. But that comes with certain things in walking and navigating this world. And people's reaction to you is ahead of your consciousness and understanding yeah. about why they're reacting to you a certain way. It's the things that are more subtle mm. that are that wear on you a bit. And it's the 
you know, a turning over of, of the ring on the subway or mm -hmm. an extra set of questions. And mm -hmm. so what I love about G.H. is he comes into this situation totally aware of what to, to expect. And as certain things are happening, he's just trying to find a way to navigate around it to get where he wants to mm. be. And that's just been my way in that's life. That's been your way. Sure, I could spend a lot of time getting caught up on certain exchanges, and at times I do. But if anything, I'm still just trying to navigate that situation so that I can get to where I want to be. And it's so, it, so it becomes like a muscle um, mm -hmm. that you sort of def you, you, you walk the earth sort of defensively mm. and sort of ready for things. And you try to move them out your way with the least amount of explosiveness, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I think yeah. that's GH. There's a lot I felt like I sort of inherently understood about him. Mm -hmm. He was actually written older in the book a bit. Mm -hmm. So there's elements of him that clearly remind me of an uncle or a grandfather mm -hmm. or whatnot that that are still very relevant today and mm -hmm. how you how I have to or how many of us just navigate mm -hmm. the world in general. Yeah, uh, that's beautiful, by the way. A little long-winded, I'm sorry, no, but I, 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 I tried to get to it. Was, it was perfect. <laughs> poetry, that's what I'm telling you. That's your right. Yeah. Off-screen, Julia and husband Danny Motor have three teenagers. Mahershala Ali and wife Amatu Sami Karim have a six-year-old daughter. We discuss parenting in the age of smartphones. Watching the technology obsession scared me watching this yeah. because I think about this with my kids yes. now. You How know. did you navigate with your kids or what did you do? <clears throat> So for us, we just had sort of simple rules where we had a charging station where everybody's phone goes when you get home and there's no phones at the table, right. certainly. And I think that my kids have seen my complete um, despair when we're in a restaurant and we see a mom out with her kids and the kids are all on some kind of device and mm -hmm. she's just kind of sitting there. Mm -hmm. I mean... It makes me just want to burst yeah. into tears. Yeah. And I'm like, you guys never do that to me. Never. Mm. I mean, I know the feeling, too. Um, by the way, how is, has fatherhood changed you? Oh, wow. It's definitely, you've heard it before. You just feel like your heart is outside of your body, just like running around in the world. And you feel so much better when you're, when you're close to them. So I'm going to shut it down there. That's all <laughs> I can say. Um, get emotional. But it's softened me. And I think it's allowed me to to really begin to hone in and lock in on the things that matter most. I feel like I've always had a general sense, a good sense of the things that matter in life. But but I think that it becomes more articulate when you have a child. And I think when you have a daughter specifically, you be, as a man, you see the harms of the world in neon, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak, because of how much girls from a very young age have to navigate to have the best chance of being in their whole full self by the time they're an adult. I mean, we're parenting young kids. Your, yeah. your kids are in, co in college and one's about to go off to college. Mm -hmm. How do you parent adult children? I mean, I parent them the same way out of the house that I parented them in the house. Which is? Which is, you know, are you getting enough sleep and you sound like you're sick and are you drinking tea? Yeah. And yeah. text me when you get home because even though I'll be asleep, that way when I wake up I can see that you're home safe and sound. Mm -hmm. And and I have an immense amount of appreciation for both of my older kids because they are embracing the things that I still need from them as mm -hmm. opposed to, Mom, you know, come mm -hmm. on, I'm, I'm fine, you know. It's they still allow me to be the same mom to them, and it's not eye rolling. And there's a huge amount of understanding. Mm -hmm. I think that they are allowing me to occupy a space and kind of get used to them being away because they're also getting used to it too. It's, you know, this is a yeah. whole new this landscape for all of us. Is it, may I ask, is it a different discomfort you leaving and traveling for work and all that compared to them leaving and going to college? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, too. And especially it's interesting when right now me being away. Mm -hmm. And so Henry and Danny are home mm -hmm. and then I'm in another time zone. And then Finn is somewhere and Hazel is somewhere. And we all were on a FaceTime the other day together, <laughs> all of us. Mm -hmm. And it was so fun and that we made it work because sometimes with the time differences yeah, doesn't so. always work. And that yeah. and it was like this like 
gift that we had, yeah. these yeah. four minutes of yeah. all mm -hmm. looking at each other and various other things, you know, I might have had like a towel on my wet head and like, <laughs> and it was just so, and that we were all so happy to be together in that way. It's just, it's so sweet. I mean, I'm so proud of them. I'm proud of all of us that we kind of have gotten to this place and are still so deeply in love and in, and in interest with each other. Mm. I love your family. I love how you speak <laughs> about them. Every time you talk about them, I feel like you're home. Like, mm. like. Thanks. I agree with that, actually. Don't you think? I, I, it's so absolutely true. Like, look, yeah. you have to do a junket. Yeah. You have to talk about your film, and mm -hmm. we are excited to talk about mm -hmm. it because I think this film is going to be amazing and everyone's going to go. But I swear, every time it happens with you especially, because when I interviewed you with Clooney, you laughed and joked about everything, and then the minute you talked about your kids, it was like, I'm home. Yeah. I'm home. Like, that's really your North Star. Yeah. Well, it all starts with Danny Motor. You mm -hmm. know, he's just really <clears throat> our anchor and our person. Yep. And yep. and in the most beautiful way, our the captain of our ship, mm -hmm. you know, truly. And it's not like giving it all away to him. It's just that for me, understanding how deeply felt life could be really started with him and my understanding of him as a person. Wow. Get her tissue. <laughs> I love love, man. When it's yeah. real, I can feel it. I, yes. I swear, a couple of things that you guys both said, yeah. I could feel chills up and down my body. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. but anyway, um, thank you. I just want you to listen to one thing. This is a song um, that Jenna and I have released. This is you. By <laughs> small tree like her. Are you feeling it? I feel you. I feel you feeling it. Wow. How? Okay, first of all, when did you have time? We did it because we, first of all, we did it for fun and then it, it's going to be a Christmas. That is, so this is an original song. You, you wrote it. Okay. We're getting no compliments here. No, no I'm no, really no, impressed. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally impressed. Like, Congratulations. <laughs> Watch out, Mariah Carey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.